Okay, hi there. Welcome to the second in our series of synoptic videos on the housing market. Uh, this one will look at uh, this question, assess the micro and macroeconomic policies that might be introduced to improve housing affordability in the UK. Essentially, this is a good chance to discuss policy and in particular the best ways to build new, enough new homes to rebalance supply and demand. Housing supply in the UK uh, is, has been increasing in recent times, but it still remains well below the level that we expect to need uh, in terms of meeting the, the future housing demand for the population. So we need between 250,000 and 350,000 new homes a year. We remain well below that figure. New house building in the UK has, has increased since 2010, since the financial crisis, but it remains lower than the peak in the late 1960s. So let's think synoptically. What about some micro policies to improve housing affordability? Well, some people are considering rent controls in major towns and cities, including in London. So rent control, of course, would cap either the level of or rate of growth of rented property in some shape or form. That's a controversial intervention. Others argue that a better approach would be to relax the supply side of the market by making planning less onerous and less time consuming and expensive and perhaps making it easier to build on greenbelt land. There could be regulations on the percentage of new bills that must be affordable homes. There could be subsidies perhaps for the construction of affordable homes in shortage areas. For all of these things by the way don't forget you can think of an analysis diagram that would go with each of these policies and the analysis diagram would help support the point you're making. Perhaps at the micro level, we need to improve the number of skilled workers coming into the construction sector. Plasterers, structural engineers, what have you, builders. So those are micro policies which in theory should increase supply or reduce the cost of building new homes. At a macro level, you just need to think slightly bigger picture. So for example, across the UK, giving local authorities the financial freedom to go to the bond market perhaps to borrow several billion pounds to, to build a lot more affordable homes. That would be essentially a, a fiscal relaxation of the laws on local authority borrowing. Perhaps we need to see an increase in government infrastructure spending on essential key infrastructure, roads and ports, what have you, outside of London, outside of the South East, to create more jobs in areas where housing and incomes are, are less strong, uh, and to reduce the depopulation effects, if you like, to rebalance the distribution of population in the UK. Perhaps at a macro level, we need to cut or eliminate VAT, a key tax, on brownfield housing developments. Or perhaps there should be some more generous tax incentives for people who, or communities who want to build new housing using self-build sustainable projects. So at a macro level, essentially it's mainly fiscal policy, I suppose, in terms of trying to improve housing affordability. Loads of analysis diagrams uh, that you could draw. I mentioned rent controls. I mentioned the government subsidy on uh, new house building. You choose your diagram, but just build it into your analysis. Here's one particular approach. Here I'm arguing that if the market supply of new housing grows faster, let's say, for example, we offer subsidies or let's say we encourage innovation in the industry. If the supply of homes shifts out further than the demand shifts out due to population growth, then house price inflation should slow down and over time property will become more affordable. Keep in mind the, the estimate that equilibrium in the housing market requires that supply should grow every year by about 1% a year. There's over 28 million homes and flats in the UK. 1% of that is 280,000. So the figure to keep in mind is probably we need 300,000 extra homes per year in the UK to really address the affordability issue. Obviously, the word assess means you need to evaluate. So micro macro policies, well, which policies are likely to be most effective in the long run? You, you choose your ground and explain your reasoning. Uh, always worth mentioning the risks of government failure. So, for example, many economists argue that rent controls uh, can create sometimes more problems than they solve potential cause of government failure. Should micro policy focus on supply, macro policy on demand, or should it be the other way around? What are the external 
factors influencing the market, which may or may not be really capable of being solved by policy. Demographic factors, for example, ageing population, increasing the rise of single family households, etc. And is the quantity of housing the sole criteria? Most of my policies have been about increasing housing supply. But what about the quality of homes? What about the overall size of homes? Uh, and crucially, of course, if you're into your environmental economics, uh, to what extent should micro and macro policies really focus on sustainable housing policy rather than just purely the number or the volume of new homes being built? So this slide shows some of the evaluative approaches that you could use as part of perhaps your final reason conclusion. So there we go, a quick video on micro and macro policies perhaps designed to improve housing affordability.